Prey. Hello, I'm Evan with New Life for Old Bikes. In today's episode, we're going to service the Sturmy Archer Hub on Dad's three-speed touring bike. Follow along, we'll disassemble it, reassemble it, and adjust it. Step one is to unscrew the cable. Over the past couple of days, I've sprayed down all the parts on this hub with penetrating oil. I don't want to break anything on a bicycle that's 63 years old. The other thing, I'll be cleaning and servicing each of the components as I disassemble it and I'll lay it out in order. It'll take me a little longer to do that as opposed to batch cleaning everything, but this way I don't mix anything up. I want you to notice there are tabs on this. Those tabs go down. I want you to notice that there's a flat spot on either side of the axle. You can do one of two things. You can either put this in a vise to hold it in place, or since I'm doing this on my desk, I'm going to use a crescent wrench. This is the lock nut that gave us so much trouble. My guess is, is once we've cleaned the threads on the axle, it'll go back together very easy. There was a washer in between that and then the cone. These cleaned up very nicely. Around the hub is a lock ring, and all you have to do is find one of these slots right here, slide a small screwdriver in, and walk that ring off. Hang on to it so it doesn't fly away. Notice which side of the hub goes up. In this case, the curved side goes up. You'll also notice there's a spacer above it. And there's a spacer below it. Underneath your cog is a dust cover. Then, on this section right here, I want you to notice there's notches. There's notches on either side. Theoretically, you're supposed to take a special tool for that. However, what I did is I took a screwdriver, put it into the notch, and then tapped it on around and loosened it up. It comes off counterclockwise. I say I tapped it. Reality is, is I had to show it who was boss. Before I clean out the internals, I'm going to clean the hub and the bearings on this side first. I want you to notice there's a dust cover that runs around the inside of these bearings. We have to remove that. There we go. I'm using mineral spirits on a soft brush to clean this out.
The bearings are in amazingly good condition, especially considering their age. We'll be greasing these up and putting them back in. I'm putting a thin layer of waterproof grease on the inside here. And on the inside of the bearing, you'll notice there's a gap there. I'm going to fill that with grease as well. And I'm going to drop that in. Then the dust cover goes back in and we're putting it, we're putting the dust cover in flat side down. In the back of this, there's an area that has little steps in it. The poles contact that, and that's what makes the clicking noise. I don't like that clicking noise so much, so I'm putting a little grease on there. Not a lot, just, just enough to quiet it down a bit. The next thing I'm going to do is take a wrench and put it on the flat part of the axle and remove the lock nut from this side. This would be easier in a vise, but again, I'm working at my desk, so we're going to do it this way. Underneath the lock washer, is a lock nut. If you'll notice, it has ridges. Those ridges go down. Next, we're removing the cone from this side. It's spring-loaded, so you'll need to hold this down. Our spring. Once we've gotten to this part, we're going to lift this spacer off. It has a washer and a spacer. Then there's a pin. The flat surfaces of the pin go up. Underneath that is the clutch. And there's a little bushing that goes underneath that clutch. The flat part of the clutch goes down. We now have a bare axle and we'll clean up all these parts. Flat side goes down. I'll get these pieces all cleaned up and as soon as I'm done I'll show you putting it back together again. Now that the driver and the bearings are all cleaned up we're going to put that section back together. I'm putting a little bit of grease inside the race for the bearings. Just like the other bearings we did, 
I'm going to fill this gap with grease so these are always lubricated, never run dry. Just like the other set of bearings we did, the flat side goes down. Very good. For this next part, there's a cap that holds the bearings down. We're going to pry this cap off. Got to be real careful because we don't want to lose the bearings. Now I've counted these and there's a total of 24 bearings. I'm going to clean the bearings and as I clean them I'll put them in this tray. All 24 bearings are cleaned and they're in real good shape, so we're going to reuse them. I'm going to clean this part up and I'll be back with you in just a moment. Now that the ball cup and the cover are all cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and put a thin layer of grease inside here and reinstall the bearings. With the bearings all installed, now we can put the cover back on. Just like the inside of the hub, this is where the paws ride to give that clicking noise. I'm adding a little grease in here to quiet it down some. These are the paws right here. Reality is, this is fairly clean. I could actually soak it in a little mineral spirits, blow it off with some canned air, and lubricate it, and it would be fine. But, for the purpose of showing you, let's take these out. Once we've raised the pin up, we can grab it there's a bevel on this pin that bevel goes toward the inside and there's a little bitty spring in here and if you'll notice the spring wraps around and that's what causes the action right there that little tab that hangs over we got to make sure we put that spring in the correct direction and the pawl, the short end, goes inside and it has a little bevel right there. We got to make sure that we put that the correct direction. I'm going to clean these up and when I come back we'll put it back together. Now that this housing, the pawls and the springs are clean, they need to be put back together. I want you to notice that the pawls have a short side and a long side. The short side has a bevel on it and it's going to actually go in this direction. The spring has a little leg on it. That's going to go underneath.
Then we oil the peg, bevel goes in, We do exactly the same thing on the other side. The leg goes around the bottom of the long side with this peg sticking out. Pin soaked in oil, bevel in. There you go, works perfect. This last part is the planet cage and the planetary gears. And we're going to remove the pins from the planetary gears. They have a beveled part that actually goes out and then the gear comes out. There's no reason not to take this apart. It's so simple. Next, we're going to flip it the other direction, and you can see there's another set of pawls. They come apart and go together just like the last set we did. Sliding it up from the bottom with a screwdriver and pulling the pin out. Make sure you don't lose that pin. As with the other one we did, the short end goes in. I'll come back when I've got these cleaned up and we'll put it all back together. By the time I was ready for reassembly last night, it was about 11 o'clock and I was getting rather tired. I tried to put the pawl in several times and managed to break my first spring. Unfortunately, these springs are not available, so I ended up making one. I stretched and bent a spring from a ballpoint pen to match the original spring. After I was happy with the way it looked, I cut it to size. At this point, we're going to put in the last pawl and I'll show you how to do that. When you're looking at the pawl, I want you to first notice one side has a slight bevel on the edge. That side is going to go up. The short side is going to go in. The spring is going to go like this. Got to make sure that the hole lines up and put it in place. This is where I was having problems yesterday. 11 o'clock at night is evidently not a good time to work on this. There you go. It's in and works perfectly. At this point, all I need to do is put a couple of drops of oil in it and turn it over to put the pinion gears in. Next, I'm going to set the pinion gears in place. I'm oiling them first before I put them in. All I'm using for this is a good synthetic oil.
On these pins, remember that the cutout goes up. Now that all these components are cleaned, I'm going to start reassembly on the internal part of the hub. The first thing we're going to do is take the axle and I'm going to oil the main gear. Then I'm going to take the planetary gear and put it over that gear. The slot goes up. Next is our bushing. And then the clutch. It goes flat side down. The pin goes through this hole right here. And the little notches in the pin go up. On top of that is a very thick washer, and this very thick washer has notches to keep that pin in place, and then there's a flat washer. At this point, I'm going to put the indicator pin back in just to simply keep everything in place. And that's how the clutch works. Push the paws in to engage this particular part. Next is the spring. Normally there's a cap on the spring, but in this case it didn't have one. I don't know whether it's not necessary or it got lost, but it was working before, so we'll put it back together just like that. driver in. Now the bearing cut. Go all the way down and then back up just a little bit. We want to make sure it runs smoothly. Next, the lock washer. The tabs go down. I want you to notice this is beveled here. We're going to go ahead and put that down and then turn the cone so that it matches up. Back it up if you have to. Don't go forward. Last, the lock nut. The last thing we're going to do is tighten down that lock nut. I've put a thin layer of grease on these threads right here. Maybe next time it'll be a little bit easier to disassemble. I need to push in the paws. At this point, we're going to use those same notches to tighten this back up. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the floor and give it a good couple of thumps and I'll be right back. Next, we put the cover on. Cover is followed by a spacer. Next is the cog. 
Mine goes with the hump facing out. Pay attention when you take yours off and put yours on the correct direction. It's different depending on the spacing of the back wheel on your bike. Spacer. Last is the lock ring. There we go. Now let's do the non-drive side. First we're going to put on the cone. That feels about right. Next I'm going to add the spacer and top it off with the lock nut. Now we just need to tighten this lock nut. Sturmy Archer requires a very thin 16 millimeter wrench to go in behind this. Before I install the wheel on the bike, I'm going to install the washer and the nut. I want you to notice that this particular washer has two little tabs on it. The tabs connect to the frame and prevent the axle from turning. They either go on the inside facing out and connect with the frame or go on the outside facing in connecting with the frame. Either way will work. It just depends on the spacing of your particular wheel. The drive side of the bike takes a nut with an indicator hole in it and an indicator pin. Normally this also has one of the flat washers with the tabs on it so it connects with the frame. Unfortunately this one does not. If uh, I have an issue with that I'll just be ordering some more of those washers later on. Anyway I'm going to start these on the wheel before I attach it to the bike. Just a note before I put the wheel back on, I let the air pressure out of the tires so I could get the tire between the brake pads before I took it off. First thing I'm going to do is wipe a little bit of grease on the threads. Since these are out in the weather, it'll prevent them from seizing up. Then with the shifter in third gear, I'm going to tighten the cable down until it's just snug. Next, I'm going to shift the bike into second gear. Once your bike is in second gear, you can adjust the cable so that the end of the shaft is even with the end of the axle in the viewing window. In other words, where the 
chain ends don't get too carried away with it yet first before you take this out for a test drive you're going to put some oil in the hub now this can take any thin oil or transmission fluid don't use penetrating oil and don't use grease in there and don't worry about overfilling it if you've put too much in it will simply leak out around the bearings with the shifter in first gear the cog should spin a little bit faster than your hub with the shifter in second gear the cog should spin the same speed as the hub and with the shifter in third the cog should spin slower than the hub thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed my video and learned something from it if you have any questions or comments let me know in the section below our next video will be an actual teardown on this whole bicycle so keep an eye out for that and don't forget, like and subscribe.